All right, so it's six o'clock, so it's time to start. So my name is Walt Miner. I am the uh, community manager for automotive grade Linux, or um, what, what was it? Agile government logistics, whatever you want to call AGL. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do is this is a birds of a feather session. So the way it works is I'm going to go through, I don't know, I've got about 10 or 15 slides real quick just to tell you what AGL is and a little bit about our community. And then you're going to get to participate and ask me questions or even better, I'll throw the question to somebody here who actually knows something, uh, unlike me, and they'll answer the question. So that would be even cooler. Um, so what is AGL? Um, Basically, we're an open source project hosted at the Linux Foundation. Uh, I'm an employee of the Linux Foundation. My colleague, Jan, Jan Simon Muller, who uh, is our, the AGL release manager, he's also an employee of the Linux Foundation. And um, we're uh, basically a neutral party among 155 members or so collaborating to create the uh, automotive software of the future. And uh, we have a single code base that we call the AGL Unified Code Base. Um, it's called Unified Code Base because at the time we created it, there were a bunch of different automotive and non-automotive software uh, uh, open source components running around from Tizen, from Geneva, uh, from Yocto. And we took, we're taking all of that, combining it with some open source components that we've built in AGL over the last four or five years. And that's what we call the Unified Code Base. We have 11 different uh, auto automotive manufacturers that are participating and supporting automotive grade Linux. Uh, this, just this past year, we've had some important uh, new members like Volkswagen joined this year, Ford uh, rejoined, and uh, SAIC, the largest uh, car manufacturer in China, is now a member. We have, like I said, 155 total members. So across the spectrum of the automotive industry, tier ones like Panasonic and Denso and Continental, um, tier twos like, uh, you know, and SOC vendors like Renaissance and Intel and Qualcomm. Um, so a whole host of, and Amazon participates with their speech recognition engine that everybody's familiar with. Um, I won't say her name because she might go off. Um, so a really good collection of companies that participate. Uh, we like to say that uh, if, if there's Linux in a car, it should be running automotive grade Linux. And we're the only organization, the only open source organization especially, addressing all the software in a car. So we've already got, in, with our UCB, we've got profiles for infotainment, for instrument cluster, for telematics and connectivity devices. Uh, we're adding heads up display. And as we move into the next year or so, we'll be adding functional safety uh, and then ADAS and autonomous driving. So the AGL unified code base, uh, basically there's one source tree that we build from to build all these different devices for a number of different uh, reference plat hardware platforms. Um, our goal is to provide 70% of a base platform for production projects for your tier one suppliers. And really, open source is fairly new within the automotive industry, and collaboration on source code is really new among the automotive industry. So really, we're, we're working to cultivate an ecosystem of developers and suppliers around open source, all using the single source code base. We have all of our source code, AGL is completely open and transparent. I'm the community manager. We have an open mailing list. Anybody can join the AGL dev community mailing list. I've got a list at the end of these slides of a bunch of different developer resources you can use. Um, all these slides are already uploaded, so you don't have to go take pictures or worry about hyperlinks. All, they're all, all the hyperlinks work, as far as I know. Uh, so you can download all the source code for the, for the app, reference applications, for the BSPs, et cetera. It's all available on our, on, our Git, on our Git page. Just to show you the amount of uh, collaboration we've got, um, this year, in, we, we, we do a release every six months, but twice a year. Um, for one year, we st every year, we, st we pick a version of Yocto and we stick with it. This year, we've been running 
uh, 2.6 or a thud. And so our, our releases are named after fish. Um, I think I've got a complete list of all the fish names. This year we released our eighth, our seventh and eighth releases, um, Grumpy Guppy and Happy Halibut, both of those running thud. Um, no, that's not true. Guppy was running um, Rocco. Halibut and Ice Fish will both run Thud. Um, we've done, since we released Grumpy Guppy at the beginning of the year, we've released four patch updates with security updates and, and kernel upgrades. We, um, <clears throat> we released Happy Halibut in July, so that's where we switched from uh, Rocco to Thud. And uh, we've done two patch updates since then. Just about uh, two weeks ago was the last one. And we'll continue to do updates of, of that through the beginning of next year. Probably, uh, probably five patch releases, possibly six, depends on how things go. Um, that middle line here, to show you, uh, I've got a slider that addresses that. But basically, those are all the opportunities we have for our community to get together um, have a face-to-face -face meeting among our developers. We had a, an all-member meeting last week in Monte Carlo. So uh, 120 people, 120 developers got together and talked about AGL and worked on source code, things like that for uh, three days in Monte Carlo last week. The, this is probably an old slide, but the um, AGL architecture is uh, microservices based. We have this binder binding concept for uh, adding new services to AGL. Uh, we use Smack for security. We're adding token logic for security as another security method as well. Um, just a, a quick picture that shows at a high level how that all works. And uh, there's a lot of document. We have a documentation site. Um, so you can go take a look at all this, uh, this architecture. We have uh, binders available, so we these are basically bind consider a binder as a collection of APIs or a collection of bindings uh, for uh, in a whole bunch of different areas. Um, home screen, window manager, audio, uh, a lot of connectivity, uh, geolocation, GPS, um, media player. So both automotive functions and more of your standard networking and uh, functions like that, all of which are then are, we have security provided by SMAC using the AGL application framework. So you can't access these APIs, these bindings, unless, you're, unless you have the right permissions. We've also got an XDS-based uh, SDK that you can download. You can um, quickly get up and running. You, know, you can either start with the reference applications we have or write your own. Uh, you've got Qt based, uh, I should change this, HTML5 is not just planned, HTML5 apps are now available using the web app manager that we have. Um, so you can basically download the applications and be up and running in a pretty short time. There's a, again, there's another uh, page on our documentation site about how to build your first application and, and download it and get it up and running on, on a board or using the Q, QMU emulator. So just a list of different uh, developer resources, like how to get to our wiki page, where the source code is. We use JIRA for issue tracking and for project management, things like that. You can go download, you can go grab uh, tarballs or uh, pre-built binaries. Uh, release notes are always available on our wiki. We use Garrett for um, code reviews, we use Git, of course, for source code management. And then we have a um, weekly developer call that I host on Tuesday morning, Tuesday morning US time, Tuesday afternoon uh, in Europe, Tuesday evening in Asia. Um, you can always are welcome to join that. We usually get about 30 to 35 people. You can ask any question you want. Uh, we have an IRC channel where a lot of folks hang out. You can ask questions there. We have a dev community mail list that was recently moved over to groups.io. So that's available as well. So there's all, and we, when we moved from mailman to groups.io, all of the back history was ported over to groups.io. So it's a much nicer searchable format. So 
If there's any question you have, you might be able to find the answer right in there, or you can just post a new question to the, uh, to the mail list and to the topics. And then finally, I'm, so I'm trying to keep this part to 10 minutes. Um, we've got, uh, this is kind of the list just to show you some of the, of the workshops that we've had th this year. We've had a lot of face-to-face -face workshops. We try to get together our, developing, our developers together about every two months or so. Um, we just had one, like I said, in Monte Carlo last week. We were in Berlin last month. We had, uh, I think, 30 or 30, no, we had 40, I'm sorry, 40 or 45 people show up in Berlin. Um, we'll be, we'll actually have some simultaneous sessions in Karlsruhe, Germany, and Yokohama, Japan next month. And we'll be in San Francisco in December, all leading up to uh, our big CES event in January in Las Vegas. So with that, this is mostly a BOF session, so you're all supposed to come prepared with questions. And um, I'm supposed to have answers, but I probably won't uh, have answers from other people here. So who has a question or who has something they want to ask or talk about? Otherwise, we can just go to the bar. Oh, you want a leading question? Oh, I didn't give you any leading questions this time? OK. Um, yeah, OK, there we go. We got a question from the man in, the man in yellow. <laughs> so um, is this automotive grade Linux project has been used in any industrial project yet or? Industrial uh, projects? Yeah, yeah I mean like in, um, even a proof of concept with any OEM or so, so in a car, yeah. Yeah, in a car, yeah. So industrial is kind of another vertical, but we have had interest from, from uh, industrial companies in, in looking at AGL. Uh, Toyota has said that they're, has announced that they're using automotive grade Linux, the ear earlier version of it, in the, uh, starting with the 2019 Toyota Camry, and now with their, and it's in the RAV4 and other vehicles as well, spreading into their Lexus lines. Um, I think Mazda has said they're going to use it, and we've got other, I th we have, like I said, 11 different OEMs. So expect that uh, we'll get more announcements from those OEMs as we, as we go forward for the next couple of years. The, the existing implementations in vehicles are infotainment, yeah. We, this, this year was the, earlier this year, um, we released the uh, instrument cluster reference device. We have an instrument cluster reference group, uh, expert group rather, that meets every two weeks. Um, Suzuki, uh, Haraki-san from Suzuki leads that expert group. There's been a lot of interest from both OEM members and tier one members like uh, Panasonic, Denso, uh, Bosch, Continental, um, Nippon, Nippon CK, is that how I pronounce it? All participate in that expert group. Um, I don't recall if, they're per if they are showing anything this week, if they had a presentation this week. But if you go to the, the uh, Linux Foundation events site, you can, you can find the all member meeting link for last week in Monte Carlo. And there, was a, there were a number of presentations about instrument cluster expert group, and there's also a wiki page for that. And they're planning on doing some, some work on a containerized solution to allow uh, IVI and instrument cluster to run on the same device, um, as well as uh, Suzuki has shown, already has shown an AG, the AGL instrument cluster running on the Renaissance E3 hardware. Um, and then Scott Murray here has been doing a lot of work on the instrument cluster uh, reference device that we have, runs on all the different boards that we have. A very sophisticated demo is what he said. Yeah, so we, we yeah. have a table at the tech showcase tomorrow. Um, tomorrow evening, you know, there's the tech showcase and, and, and uh, booth crawl. So we have a table at the tech showcase. We, we don't have a booth, um, but we do have a table. And we'll be showing that, hopefully, we'll be showing that instrument cluster demo tomorrow. Uh, we should be showing on the Raspberry Pi, the SandCloud, uh, the BeagleBone Enhanced, and we should be showing on the UpSquared? Up Intel UpSquared. So some, we should be showing it on some mix of those, those boards, both IVI and instrument cluster. Adaptive AutoSAR, so his question was, do, do we have plans for 
complete, completing or competing? Cooperation with Adapt. Oh, Autosar is a closed organization, so we've had some discussions about working with them, but it, it's been hard to hard to find a way to do that. Um, they just have different they have different business interests than our members. Can you, can you can you repeat that? What, what is the AGL? In fact, is it a distribution? Is it is it what exactly? So there's a distribution. Absolutely, there's a distribution. All the source code you can go download. There's a meta AGL Pocky layer that's a, a major component of that. So you basically, and then on top of that, you can build. Uh, we, we build different reference devices. So we have a meta uh, a meta instrument cluster. I think it's called uh, meta. So you can basically then build all those reference devices. We can build AGL core minimal and then, and then the devices on top of that. What is the benefit uh, compared to Yocto or to? It's a superset of Yocto. It's a superset. So, and there's other infrastructure as well. Yeah. So there's other infrastructure that uh, AGL members have contributed and then the project itself has funded. So the application framework that Walt mentioned that's the significant value add. It's an AGL specific enabler for OEMs to build applications to run on top of the AGL platform. And that's an AGL open source project that doesn't exist for, you know, it's, it's a, a unique thing that AGL brings to the table. I mean, you so just, this is, our, distro, uh, this is our, our Git mirror here. Um, so you can see, you don't see it. See if I do this. No. That's odd. Okay. Okay, so that's our that's that's our our git, our git mirror. So scroll up a little. Scroll up. So we have these meta dash agl layers. Yeah. So that together with. Uh, Yocto layers, um, with that we build AGL. Um, the collection that you need to pull down, you will find in AGL repo, so we are using the repo tool like in Android to pull all the different Git layers down. Um, then the AGL specifics are in, in Meta AGL. Um, and uh, here you see all the reference apps, uh, the services, um, the applic reference applications, and the uh, in the uh, if we scroll down to source, then there are the um, the, co the the unique middleware components. Did I hit source yet? Here that AGL hosts. So the application framework, um, Synagora, um, that is, um, yeah. One, one of the key components in AGL. A little while ago, we talked about instrument cluster. And when it comes to instrument cluster, a lot of buzzwords around security, safety, compliance, certifications come. So how does AGL as an organization or project deal with this? So uh, with respect to safety in the instrument cluster, so the instrument cluster expert group is addressing that, and I, I don't have the, I, I could go grab them, but so they're addressing that with a containerized solution. Um, there's been also been a proposal for a hypervisor solution to keep the AGL code uh, in, a, in a separate virtual machine or a separate container with the safety certifiable part in another virtual machine or container, depending on which architecture you look at. The, Instrument Cluster Expert Group in particular, if you go and look at last week's um, all-member meeting, they made a presentation, it was uh, led by um, uh, Yamaguchi-san from Aishin 10, oh, not Aishin, from Aishin AW. Um, they made a presentation last week about the architecture they are proposing uh, that they want to show at CES and get into the source tree with the IVI system and the instrument cluster and the safety, the telltales and the buzzers, all in different Linux containers. And so that's the approach we're, we're taking now, uh, being led by Suzuki, 
because uh, they want to get this into vehicles as quickly as possible. And um, we are also participating in the ELISA project where um, basically we are encouraging our members to join ELISA. We're doing a little bit of support, Jan Simon and I. Uh, I'll be attending the functional, what are they calling it? The security, the safety critical systems summit on Thursday. So we'll be working on how uh, we've got a presentation about that group in particular, that instrument cluster group and how they're going about their work and how we can continue to cooperate with ELISA. So um, I expect that in the next 12 to 18 months, you'll see both source code and some more definite plans from our, uh, our OEMs and tier ones on, on how they're going to achieve that safety certification. You're welcome. Uh, could you spend uh, a few more words about the architecture of the SDK, which comes with AGL? So, can you uh, repeat that? The architecture, which what? Of the SDK for oh. application development. This this is a question basically from a Yocto person, which is interested in knowing if it's possible to leverage uh, any concept for a different context. I mean, is this really specific for the middleware that you are providing, or? No, um, the um, XTS is uh, basically a, a wrapper, and it has a, it has a web UI, and it can take basically any Yocto SDK, and uh, it provides a couple of uh, wrappers that you can integrate into your IDE. Uh, I might actually I might throw the ball over to Stefan. <laughs> There's our SDK people over there. So he, he can, he this can is why tell I said, a little more. This is why I said I don't really know anything, but I have people here who do. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, well, there are two parts, in fact. The first one is that um, the SDK we produced with AGL is, as you said, it's a Yocto, a pure Yocto SDK, so you get the cross tool chain. And uh, obviously, uh, I would say the development packages uh, for the application framework, for the binder, everything you need to uh, develop your code and, and, and run it, right? Um, but as many Yocto developers, or not Yocto developers, in fact, people who want to develop things on top of Yocto, um, you have two solutions. In fact, <laughs> either you write your own recipes, so it's a hassle, it's, it's a bit of pain, the learning curve is quite difficult, it's doable, of course, but you, it takes months and years <laughs> to get something uh, correct, I would say. Um, the other path is to use the SDK, which is produced directly by the build. And uh, for this, you need an environment uh, which is uh, stable, uh, which follows the releases of uh, AGL, and which is quite easy for you as a developer. I mean, you, if you think about someone who's developing web applications, for example, or Qt applications. Uh, so it's not someone which is specially used to uh, security embedded stuff and st very uh, low, low details, I would say. Uh, so we wanted to create something which makes life easier for those people. And typically, uh, if you are able to take your ID, your, your, your preferred ID would, would be uh, Eclipse or Visual Code or whatever ID you, you want, uh, and you would be able to uh, compile, run, and debug uh, your stuff while still leveraging the Yocto SDK, that would be great. So that's what we did with XDS. It's just uh, an abstraction of uh, the whole uh, build system through the Yocto SDK. There is a Docker container which embeds the tool chain. You have to share the sources with that container, etc. So I, I wouldn't say it's very easy. But at the end, uh, the result is as you will build your application using your IDE as if you were building natively. It's very close to, in the concepts, No, no, it's very generic. It's, it, or it, it, as, as Jens Samuel said, it's uh, closely related, related to Yocto SDK, in fact, more than AGL. Uh, but one thing is specific in the automotive world is that you, for, for cost reasons, 
you want to uh, have a, a big community of developers and high-level apps developers, uh, which cost nothing. So you have to deliver some tools for those people to, to get hands-on, right? That's the reason for XDS, but it could be moved to any, any other market or project easily. That's open source after all. You... No, 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 exactly. You can, you can have uh, something lean, yeah, definitely. While answering one of the previous questions, you mentioned that there were inquiries from the industrial automation industry. What were they looking for in AGL? Because uh, automotive is kind of orthogonal or quite different to the industrial uh, yeah, automation. Yeah, I think they were more interested, mostly interested in kind of how we're packaging up things, especially with the application framework. So no specifics like looking for how the middleware is working or taking a slice out of that, middle, how the middleware is implemented. Well, I mean, if you think about the application framework and how we're doing the security and, and how the middleware then combines into that with the binder and the binding concept, that's what I think they're mostly interested in. Um, okay. I really haven't had that many discussions with them. <laughs> because. You know, what I, find, what I find typically is I come to something like this or one of our all member meetings and I always learn about somebody using AGL for some new way that I hadn't heard of because people are grabbing the code and you know, because we're completely open, um, people are always grabbing the code, downloading it and doing something interesting with it. Um, and they're not necessarily contributing anything back, um, especially when we went to Embedded World in Nuremberg last year, we saw all sorts of AGL, AGL demos running in different, in different booths with no credit. In fact, some people even had even removed the AGL logo from the, from the UI. Uses and abuses, yeah. What's that? Uses and abuses of the code. Exactly, exactly. Anybody else have a question? No? Okay, one more. Uh, since a few years, there has been a project called Apertis. Uh, I think it's the mainly backed by Bosch. Right. Um, and they have some components for middleware like video playback and uh, uh, infotainment components. Is there any sort of contact or collaboration with them? We, uh, so Bosch, I think, uh, they've contacted us about how we could possibly collaborate. We've had some internal discussions with them, but nothing concrete. You're not allowed to ask any questions. <laughs> And do you have any test case suits? Yes, so uh, actually Jan Simon runs our uh, continuous integration and automated test group, expert group, and we have a large suite of tests that we run, and I'll let him uh, talk about that. Okay, so um, we have um, a set of automated tests that we run. Um, any code that is proposed in Garrett will be built and we test it on uh, our reference platforms. Um, the, uh, of course, we can throw in and should throw in even more, uh, no question. Um, we also have a set of manual test plans. They are in our JIRA, so there's a the Zephyr test plugin in JIRA. Uh, so Called they the are, Zephyr. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's a test plugin in our JIRA and we have test cases there. Um, Eddie from Consalco does those on a weekly basis for master and the, and the latest stable. Uh, and um, Fujitsu is also uh, doing um, a test runs. Um, and uh, that is... Uh, if you go to... If you go to groups.io, our new mail list that I have listed up there, you can sign up for the uh, test reports mail list, and you can get the, uh, the test reports that come out of Kernel that's, CI. That's the automated tests. Uh, they run um, after our Jenkins builds. Uh, we will trigger a run on the Lava infrastructure with the different boards. The results are then passed on to Kernel CI, and Kernel CI will do the email reports, and that's what you see in the... Um, in the test reports group. It's, it's not much of a technical question, but can I ask how do you get the funds for, for uh, 
or how did you get uh, how do we funds? Yeah. how do we pay for all this how you pay for all this <laughs> so uh, yeah so AGL has um, like I said 155 member companies and uh, the everybody all these member companies have to be members of the Linux Foundation and then beyond that they join AGL as a project um, and the platinum gold and silver members pay additional uh, fun, pay additional money to be part of AGL and have uh, they get a, a, a seat on the advisory board or could be elected to the advisory board. So they get a little more, in addition to having some more, fin a bigger financial stake in AGL, they also get a little more uh, say in the governance. Um, and that's not to say it's pay to play because many of our bronze members are some of our biggest contributors in terms of code. So once you're a member of AGL, uh, once you're a member of the Linux Foundation, um, you can join as a bronze member um, basically for free above and beyond the Linux Foundation membership. Um, and then if you, if you want more uh, say in the governance, then you can join that silver, gold, or platinum. So, so mainly it's through man, this membership fees or? For the Linux Foundation? No, no, it's mainly the, the, the funding is- that, mo that, that money that we collect from silver, gold, and, and platinum members then goes to fund AGL activities like uh, the infrastructure, um, me, <laughs> okay. Jan Simon. Thank you. Hi. Uh, what is the main difference between AGL and uh, Android Automotive? If, um. I honestly don't know a lot about Android Automotive, other than uh, what I, because you know, a lot of their a lot of their stuff is under NDA. Um, basically, we're work work. Android Automotive is being controlled by Google. Um, you've got to sign, you know, a lot of legal documents with Google. Uh, you have no say in the governance and and what Google decides their roadmap is going to be. AGL is completely open. Um, you can download our code at any time. You can go do whatever you want with it based on the open source licenses that we have. Um, if you want to join at a, uh, as a member, you can have some say in the governance of it and the roadmap, things like that. So um, the biggest difference is um, really we're, we're a completely open project and anybody can contribute and, and have a say in where we're going, uh, which is not the case with, with Google. Anybody else? He likes to be called a microphone engineer. Uh, that's a question about uh, whether that AGL has some tooling additional. I mean, like uh, a lot kind of Autozar uh, has its kind of visual tooling from different different uh, software companies. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have something like that that will ease my, like, as a developer life? To well, develop, so like, I have, like, different OCUs and I want to easily communicate with my software written with AGL underneath. So we, we okay, so a couple, a couple of ways to approach that. There, we have a documentation site and a wiki page um, in terms of tooling, we've got the SDK that Stefan was describing that I think we're working on improving all the time. And then the great thing about this ecosystem is there's a number of companies who have been contributing quite a bit to AGL, you know, smaller tier twos who are always willing to jump in and help um, people who want to get up and running quickly. You know, of course, they want to get paid for that, but um, so, you know, depending on the scale in which you want to get, you know, you're trying to you're trying to ramp things up. You have the option of, you know, just joining the community, uh, working out in the open, or working even behind closed doors and just asking us questions. We, I've seen companies do that too, um, and then or you can engage a, a services company to uh, to help you out. And and those, from what I've seen, um, there's a number of. We have a. Um, I, sh I should have. Emily should have said something while she was sitting there. Uh, we have a um, on our website. We have a um, vendor, direct, vendor marketplace or a vendor directory you can go to, and I can't see my screen very well, but it, 
I can add that, I can add that link to the slides. If you go to automotivelinux.org, uh, you'll see there's a vendor marketplace, and you can click on that, and you can see all the different vendors who offer services around AGL. If you, uh, if you want to get, you know, if you need help getting kickstarted, you can go that direction as well. Thank you. There's also there's also a link there where if you're a vendor who is a member of AGL, you can click a link there to be added to the vendor directory if you have a, a product or a service around AGL that you want to you're, you're providing. That's all part of the we're building an ecosystem of of companies. So time wise, I think our time is up. Um, thanks all for coming and participating, because otherwise, if you didn't participate, it would be pretty boring. Um, and uh, hopefully, I'll see you around this week. I'll be here all week. Thank you. <laughs>